All right, I had a really interesting class last night with one of my students. He brought in a song or brought up a cool song, Teenage Head, Something on My Mind. Very old band, but great rhythms in this stuff. Um, I love how they accent different strums. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. I do have a chord chart too. Um, so basically, when you read the chord chart when it's on my, on my channel, we always read left to right. From here to here and then we follow it down all the way left to right each one of these all the way to the chorus then it says back to verse chorus verse chorus break follow it all the way up to the break then down here is the end and we just keep doing these two chords down here is the cool um, rhythms that they created going from the C to the A minor we're going to talk about in this lesson so basically, we start off with the intro on a C chord, and we try to accent beats two and four, and our rhythm and our count is one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. And now that's slowed down so that you can pick up on that. Um, the other thing you could do once you get that going good, I would try to repeat that over and over again. One, starting on the C. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. Now back in the day when I was practicing, we'd have to use our foot when we get this one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and and four and, and your foot's only tapping on one two three and four of course it has to come up in between each of those numbers to hit the floor so we get down up down up with our foot and every time I say one two three or four my foot should be hitting the floor so we got one two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. now the hard part is getting this uh, a minor and the muted muting the chords so we get this one and two and i tend to use my thumb to come over block out six and five and my a minor chord here these fingers i could just just release the pressure a bit and and bring your wrist back just enough well your thumb has to come around too so you're gonna have to bring your wrist up like that and then come back. So a good exercise to practice would be doing stuff like one and two and three and four. Maybe that's too fast because we've got a lot of things to think about and do. So what we could try is slow it down where we got one and two, three and four. And just get that really good. That'll take a bit of time. One and two. Anything, any trick that I show you, I didn't just, I wasn't just able to do it. I had to work at it and figure out how to kill sounds from other notes and things of that nature. So don't think that because I show you, oh, this is easy. It looks really easy. Guitar looks really easy. Um, but there's so many tricks going on that you don't see the accenting of beats and, and the mutes in between strums. Um, that's the hard stuff. That's the details that makes the songs back in our day with instruments and that sound cool. Um, even today, I mean, we use still the same ideas and formulas. Um, just, you know, a little bit different of writing compared to back in, um, you know, the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. And, but it really works out to all the same idea theoretically and stuff. So with Teenage Head, something on my mind, if we can get those tricks down, one and two and three and four and. Once I get it, I try to be able to do it over and over again. It's like one and two and three and four and. And you'll see that strum on, on written under the bottom of the intro, so you'll be able to follow along with that. If you're just looking at the intro line, you'll see all that. So I'm on the A minor going one and mute. And you can see the M under the arrow under two for muting. One and two and three and. And then the other hard part is and. We're not coming down on three, we're missing it. And three and four and. All right, so the whole song in full speed, because it's a lot the same, you guys can work on those strums and get the C to A minor really good where you got this one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. And 
that's another way of doing it, just lifting off M4 M instead of worrying about your thumb. So you get this one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. And because we're strumming up, we just release one and two and three and four and one, two, and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. When we're coming down on beat two, that's when it's hard. We have to get this. But when we're doing mutes on and up, which we're not really on this song, the only thing we're doing is one and not letting it stay ringing. But you can one and two and three and four and. The full speed of that would be one, two, and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And one other thing you want to worry about is don't strum like this. I see too many people coming in from different um, uh, ideas about using their arm instead of their wrist. It's all in the wrist. And I'll have, I'll have debates with people on that. Okay, fine, use your arm, see if you can keep up to me. And I'll sit here and I'll do this forever. And they'll be like... And by within, a, you know, 30 seconds, they're tired. So you have to use your wrist. Learn to use your wrist. And, you know, you want to get fast and keep it loose. And don't, don't squeeze your pick and your fingers so hard. It's got to be really relaxed. And you can do things like 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and nice and light. 1E and a 2E and a 3E. And the pick should just basically sweep down the top of the strings nice and lightly. And same coming up, and you come down the edge of the pick, not on the flat, right? And keep your fingers out, and that's how you should hold a pick. All right, we're going to play through the song once, and then we're going to talk about the last cool strum at the very end. So here we go. One, two, from the intro. One, two, th and you can slow it down with the gear. I'm going to play it at the speed of the song, but you can use the gear on YouTube and slow it down. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. And four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three first. One, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four. Second line of the verse, we're on C, two and three and four and one and two and three and G, two and three and four. Same as a C strum. Same thing again. Two and three and four and one and two and three and one two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and one and two and three and one two and three and four and one two and now we got to go to that F one two and three and one two and three and four 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 and G three and four and C two and three and four Back to the verse, two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one. Gotta listen to the song, the melody's cool. C, two and three and four, an A minor and a G. Two and three and four and one, two and back to the C. One, two and three and four, an A minor, three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Two and three and four, an A minor, two and three and four and G. And three and four and G. Now we get that F again. One, two, and three and four and G. Two and three and four and C. Two and three and four and one, two and four and F. Two and three and four and G. Two and three and four. Now this cool ending. One, two, and three and four and one and two and three. Back to verse again, but now there's a solo. And four and one, two and three and four and one and two and again guitar solo now one two and three and four and one two and three and four and one and two and three and one two and three and four and one and two and three and four and G two and three and four and G two and four and now we go to the chorus so we play through the chorus then there's a break
Back to the course, F, G, C, C, F, G, C, A minor, C, and A minor. All right, then we go to the break, and the break is G. We get this one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and C, two, and three, and four. Back to G again, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and C, two, and three, and four, and C, three, and four, and F, two, and three, and four, and F, two, and three, and four, and C, two, and three, and four. And a G again, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and now the ending, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. It does that right to the end, C to the A minor, using that cool, funky rhythm part. Um, so yeah, I hope that really helps you get through this rhythm and this song. It's pretty cool. If you haven't heard it, check it out on YouTube. Um, and the, getting to the F can be tough for people who are just starting out. So maybe like a true F chord would be barring those two. And the only way I get that to happen with my students is I ask them for the first week just to get their finger to be able to do that almost bending backwards, right? I have other versions where you could be on the side of your finger and then get these in. I tend to play it a lot like this, I notice. My finger's bent here a bit, and these guys are like on the side. So if I'm coming from my G, or I'm coming from my two and three and four and one. See, I always get this, uh, where are we here? We're coming off the G, one, two, and three and four and three and four and. So coming from G, you want to think about finger three getting to string four. Get that working really good. Do it slow. And try to get three and two to land together after that. And you have to work it. It takes time. And then try to get finger one to land all three. And don't worry about barring right away. Just try not to let that E string ring out. Otherwise, it's an F major seven. We want to hear an F major, it sounds like that. F major 7 sounds like that. Almost like in the David Bowie song. Um. That's a major 7 sound that we're hearing there. It's a beautiful chord, but F major sounds more like... You could have all four fingers for that too. That's still an F, that's an F. So any way you can get to that F chord. The other hard part is muting this one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. So instead of muting on that part, just release the pressure here. Go one, and two, and three, and four, and. And every time I lift off, the string's still ringing. This one's ringing a bit. That's why we use our thumbs and things to get rid of noise in the studio, because the microphones pick everything up. So you get this one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and coming from the C, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and so that trick's hard, uh, one, and two, and three, and four, and so you could practice coming up. Releasing these fingers and bringing thumb, get rid of the noise. Back on the chord, bring your wrist back down so we got lots of room between our hand and the neck. And then when we mute, we come up like this and then back down. And that's a great practice thing too. And do it slow because you're teaching some moves to your, your tricks to your hands on how to get this. They're not just going to, you know, quick like that. I show students and they're like really fast with it. I say learn things really slow and then increase your speed. And then you can practice going up and mute, up and mute, up and mute. Great trick. And then try to get fast. So we got up, up, and we could think of it as one and two and 
and then our hands always want and two and hands always moving like that right hand all right so if i'm playing that i got one two and three and four and one and two and three and four three and four and one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so we got three ups one and two and three and four and we end and four and back to the c the c to the a minor change is pretty easy you just have to bring finger three down below finger two and make sure there's room sometimes finger two is too close to here and we got no room so when i'm changing my fingers there but it's sliding back to make room as and forward that's another cool trick to know about how to get into your chords all right, I hope that helps everybody through Teenage Head, something on my mind. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.